Okay, so I want to make a hand drill. And let's just talk about the spindle for a hand drill. This is about two and a half feet long. So anywhere between two and a half, three foot would be ideal. You can go shorter, especially with different methods of the hand drill, like the gas pedal hand drill. I can go with a little bit shorter of a spindle because I don't need as much to make the spindle work meaning that I don't have to have my hands travel all the way down to get that downward pressure. So length is important. Also, when preparing the spindle, I want to smooth out the surface because I don't want it to tear up my hands. You notice how I have these calluses, but you want to try to get as much surface of your hands on that hand drill. We're going to focus on modifications to the hand drill first. So the length of the spindle is not as important for these modified hand drills. So this one's been split and I don't want any rough edges here. So I'm going to carve this down. We'll smooth down over time as I burn this into the fireboard itself. Now, density of the spindle is important because as these, as this yucca ages, its density is going to decrease. It's going to become more fibrous. Plus, the rate of growth of these can also determine how fibrous it is. I really want really dense yucca. So you can see, I can see the fiber striations in this, but I know this is dense enough. So that's going to allow me to get some downward pressure to start to form that notch in the fireboard. I want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Anything that you can slide over, this is the method of the clove hitch that you want to use. If you have the way to slide it over something. So I'm going to make a bite in the rope from right to left. I'm going to repeat that process from right to left. Now I have two loops. The, hand, the loop that's in my right hand goes behind the loop that's in my left. I'm going to open that up and slide it over. But I don't want it at the very top. So I want to slide this down right around here. Now, I want this single clove hitch will not be enough. It'll shake loose. So I'm going to make a bend in the rope and go behind the spindle and back through that loop. Cinch that down. And all I'm doing is just dressing that clove hitch, just tightening it up. I'm going to repeat that process one more time and I think three will be enough. I just don't want it to shake loose. Now I've seen my buddy Zach go out and grab a piece of yucca. I think I have a video on it. Braid it really quick and um, it's strong enough to use the gas pedal hand drill. So you could do all of this from yucca is what I'm getting it. Right to left, right to left. Slide that over. And I want to tension this down so that I have extra cordage so that I can put another half hitch in. So there's my clove hitch. So I'm going to put another half hitch in. I have a little knot at the end of it. And there we've got our gas pedal. So I'm going to slide this down some so that I have a good angle. So what's going to happen is I want it up high enough so that if it does slip or slide, it's not going to touch the ground. There we go. And so I can adjust the tension. Now look how stable that is. That's another reason that the gas pedal has an advantage. I'm just I'm not holding it at all. I've just got my foot on the spindle and I can hold it there in place. So that's how to create the gas pedal with the downward pressure. You gotta be careful because it's real easy to put too much pressure. Like if you're way out here, you're gonna put a lot of pressure. I find it's easier to kind of get this between 30 and 45 degrees, ideally about 30 degrees, 
and just put a little bit of weight with my foot so that I don't just burn right through. That's the only disadvantage I see is it's real easy to put too much downward pressure, but you'll feel that in your hands. Like right now, I'm in that notch and I can't even turn that because I've got so much downward pressure. So it's speed over pressure, but this really gives you a lot of control and um, you, you get a lot more control on your downward pressure, I should say. And then you dedicate this other foot, kind of holding that into place. I'll just put it in that notch for that. Um, I'm creating a little divot so that I can burn a larger divot into place. So my downward pressure, like I described earlier, is with my foot. You don't want too much pressure. Okay, so I burn my little divot in there. So now, actually, I'm gonna put it on this side here. So I wanna get right in the middle. So you notice I'm starting on top of that divot and then I'm rolling around. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can get it dead center. So now I'm gonna take my saw. I'm gonna cut that in to create my little pizza wedge. You don't wanna to go too far because this is gonna get wider. It's gonna get as wide as this because I don't want it burning through like that one almost did or that one almost did. Real easy for these to burn through, but it's easier to control the downward pressure with this gas pedal hand drill than it is the thumb loop. So you wanna take your time when you do this. Don't rush it. It still needs to be wide enough to collect the dust. You wanna save time and energy by using some of the dust that you're creating. Even though it's not charcoal-like dust, even though it's not burned, it'll still fill that notch and it'll still carry the coal. So I like to keep the cordage on the same side. I like to keep a little bit of that dust in there so you don't get any polishing, because then that won't create enough friction. Keep my foot up here close, find a good area that gives enough downward pressure, straight down but not too much. So I'm gonna go longer strokes, less pressure. So I normally like to keep going, even when I know I have one just because it's gonna burn your arms out if you're not accustomed to it. You notice how far that traveled out of that notch? You're gonna see that more with a hand drill. You just don't want it traveling too far. You want that dust to stay in that notch for as long as possible so that you can keep some heat on it. So I could have stopped earlier, but I want to make sure, you know, you don't want to put all that effort into it. You don't really have a coal. So I almost go to fatigue, even when I have it, just to form a huge coal, especially when it's hot, uh, there's a lot of humidity. So here's some shavings I'm going to put on. I'm just going to build this coal up, just to give you a good example of what I'm talking about. About taking your time. The smaller, more powdery stuff is the best thing to build the coal. But you can take fluff like this as well from other attempts. If you have a tender fungus, you can break off a chunk to hold the coal or you can do shavings, which work well. Just like a cheese grater, right? You're grating some small fluffy pieces on there that will take that coal well and build it up. Let's say you don't have that, but you have your fireboard. Maybe you don't have enough. I'm just gonna do some 
shavings in an area that I wouldn't use. I would make an indention out here to make a coal. I wouldn't make a divot to make a coal way out here because it's more likely to break off and then I'll put all that effort into something that's not going to work for me. So I'm getting in that fibrous material and then I can take it, scrape it up and use that to build a coal. Especially if you're in an environment Where it's really wet outside. So let's say I'm out and all the outside of this log is wet. And I can shave off, get to the inner core that's dry, especially if it came off of a tree, and do shavings from that. Almost like you would do a feather stick. But I'm taking the shavings completely off. And then I can take those shavings and place those on top of my coal. Start with the fluffy material first, then the shavings, then something larger. And before long, you could actually, as long as the ground is not wet, as long as you have something between your coal and the ground, you can build a tinder bundle. You just turn it upside down, blow that coal deep into the bird's nest, or even if it's on a, already on a piece of wood that's dry and won't wick moisture, you can blow the coal up into it there on the ground, not have to move it. 